everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I want to show you step by step how you can paint this amazing winter train. So this is going to be a full, really wonderful train fantasy winter wonderland painting. We're going to go into this a little bit deeper. So this painting is a three hoot, but hang in here because I think you're going to see a lot of techniques that will help you no matter where you are in your art journey. We're going to be covering how to do this fabulous steam. We're going to be doing in kind of even better tree and really getting the train worked in using gridding or traceable. You're going to be able to do this today. To that end, check the description below and you're going to see a link to our website. On the website is a free traceable is your grid reference and your image reference for you. So that should make this a lot easier. I am going to be doing my step by step during this. So that's going to be really fun. So that'll be there for you too. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He helps me with all this craziness by making sure I show up on time, <laughs> taking us live, tracking me with one of our many, many cameras and zooming in on the action so you can see the color mixes, you can see the paint techniques, you can see everything so you can get better at acrylic painting today. He also scans the conversation as if he doesn't have enough to do. He also scans the conversation and sometimes your questions that you ask during live stream might be answered on the show. And that's great for everybody here on the replay. How are you guys showing up? We miss you when you guys can't make the lives, but you know, time zones and work and life and stuff. But hopefully maybe some of those questions will help you at home because that question could be your question. I'm so excited about this painting. I'm just ready to hop on in. Are you guys ready to hop on in? Oh yeah. All right, let's get into this. Right. Oh, there we go. You don't need to see my phone. <laughs> you can see the phone. It's all pink. Okay, so here I have my references out. Here's the grid reference. This is done on a one inch grid. So every inch there's a little square and that's going to help us freehand it in. Again, if you're not comfortable with that yet, go ahead and use the traceable and I'll let you know when you're going to do that. So get those printed out and ready for yourself. Yours will have a watermark on it. I have here, I think I accidentally did an 11 by 14, sweetheart, and I need a 9 by 12. We can fix that. Can we? Sure. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Hi, this is live. And I'm so excited. I grabbed the wrong canvas size, which isn't going to make a great one-to-one uh, -one, um, exchange. So that would have totally messed up your grid. And we were supposed to do the 9 by 12. That way we could get more into techniques and not have to worry so much about things. And also that's, uh, that size makes it easier for you if you have to print out the traceable. Look at this, totally different deal. <laughs> Same kind of canvas, Artist Loft comes in packs. But again, I chose this size because if you're at home and you're using the traceable and you're printing it out from your home printer, that's gonna make it a lot easier. And also it's going to make it a lot easier for you to take on all these techniques. So there were a bunch of reasons. Okay, correct canvas. We fixed it. Uh, we have, we fixed it. Um, usually we put wishes on here, so let's do one right now. I hope that everyone watching the live stream right now has the good that they need in their life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's healing, maybe it's love, maybe it's a new job. I wish that. <laughs> That's a good wish. I'm just gonna leave it at that. So <laughs> to start out, all the paint colors are in the description below, but to start out, I'm going to just use a gray. We're going to begin this painting with a gray background. Isn't that kind of nice? Yeah. And the reason is a lot of times with a winter background, it can be nice to make a gray base because it's very neutral and it's very calming. And so we're going to use titanium white paint here and we're going to use black paint. You could use this particular one is carbon black. You could use Mars black. You could use lamp black. You could use bone black. Um, any of them for this part of the painting will work quite well. I'm going to grab an artist knife. Uh, this is a Scotty knife. Um, there's a link to the set down there if you need it, um, but it's just a really nice way to mix paint. I'm gonna take a little bit of my black over to my white, and I'm probably gonna mix a gray that's almost a midpoint, which means one part white to one part black. So if you had a gray scale of 10 shades of gray, not 50, um, cause that's just too much gray. <laughs> Your eyes probably see 20 shades. So <laughs> we just mix up a nice amount. You can see I'm just scraping and mixing. And all this is doing is giving me a nice thoroughly mixed bunch of paint. Scrape off any extra that I have there, wipe off the knife and just grab a big brush to paint it all in. 
I'm going to use my baby. This is my number 30 Art Sherpa Bright. I'm going to dip my brush in water here and load up and just paint the whole canvas gray. Mm. All right. Since I'm painting the whole canvas gray, John can say hi to everybody. And if you've got anything we've got going on at the beginning. Everyone's very excited to see you. This is a very, there's a lot of excitement for this one today. So they just were all passing along. How happy everyone is to see each other today. There's been a lot of, I think, holiday cheer is what I'm sensing in our community, maybe. Yeah. You know, there's a... Uh, I think we're just ready for the good to be coming into our lives. I see a lot of good tidings going around. Good tidings are good. You know? Good tidings to you and all of your friends. That, that, that <laughs> seems to be what's happening in here in, in chat. It's just... Uh, it's nice that we can still be wishing well for each other in the world. Yeah. All right. So you can see this is just a nice matte gray. It is. Now I'm going to rinse this out and put this aside. And then remember, what's my big thing about, you know, brushes? You got to wash them at the end of every painting session. You want to mm -hmm. get all that acrylic paint out of your brushes. So between colors, rinse them out thoroughly, lay them flat, and then right after, give them a thorough, vigorous washing. And that will extend their life a long, long time and really help you as an artist. Now, I'm going to dry this because to grid out... A grid line, it needs to be dry, otherwise it's a big, chalky, awful mess. So let's do that. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say, don't forget to use the lowest heat settings in your paint. Everybody likes, um, and your paint, ha, on your air mover, your hair dryer, your drying mechanism that, let me find the right camera, there it is, the right uh, drying thing. So the real reason for that is that, uh, oh, she's, what's she doing? She's drinking coffee. Uh, the real reason for that is that you don't want heat to disrupt the drying of that surface. Heat can conduce color shift and problems like that, cause it that it get lighter, your dark grays. So rather than, you know, your blacks and things. So rather than using heat, just use it on the coolest setting and that'll help it. You can see Cinnamon playing around there. She's goofing today. We're having a, a goofy McGooferson day. So, yeah, there we go. I don't know what she's doing. Checking checking the surface. You got to make sure it's it's really thoroughly dry because on the next, like, as you add these lighter colors, especially that cloud, if it's not dry, you'll end up picking up paint. And that's what she's checking for right there is making sure it's dry all over the place. Got to make sure it's dry. It's dry. Dry like the desert. Or, and also not warm. That's another thing. Uh, if your paint, um, if you did have heat on there, right? Because you're like a rebel and you're like, yes, I will use heat for my hair dryer. If the surface is dry when you do the chalking or charcoal and you press hard at all, that will really go into the paint and leave those indentions. So that is the other thing that you really want to do is just make sure it's kind of cool, like a cucumber. Hmm. I thought that was more interesting than it actually was. <laughs> So to this end, I'm going to get some pastel. That seems to be pretty good. And I'm going to come here with my T-square. This is in the description below. This is just a special ruler that allows you to really square up measure lines. Um, it's often used in architecture and draftsman's work. But artists really like it too because, you know, straight lines are good when you need them. And so all I got to do here is just make these little horizontal lines. And this is basically going to match the grid that I gave you to print out. So on the web page, if you want to resize, you can take the reference and put it into the gridding software that I recommend there. But if you're really wanting to get the result we're getting today, it's probably best to at least paint it along one time with me this way before you go off canvas. See, not off script, it's off canvas, John. Yeah. Am I not funny? <laughs> I don't know if I'm funny. I know I'm a handful, but I don't know if I'm funny. You are funny. I laugh at I'm something. I'm we here. have a, a <laughs> John having to deal with me, we have a, a, just a lot going on. We have a second channel, and it, it, it's a dream I've been trying to work on here, and John's been dealing with my ample energy all morning. Mm. Shall we call it that? Ample energy? 
<laughs> I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Patty a big art hug. Hi, She's Patty. one of our patrons who's supporting us out here in oh, chat did today. Did she give us some support? She did. Does Patty get some bubbles? She for we we had I'm gonna some, bubble her up. She she loves to support my talk about about color shift. Do you guys see your heating. bubbles? That's I think I got I got the bubble cam going. Okay, cool deal. I, we got bubbles, Patty. So thank you guys for uh, for all that support. You know that the patronage and all that is you guys help us a keeping able to do what we do, which is free videos and teaching people to paint. We love that and hanging out with you guys in live. And so it's thank very you. very cool. These these canvases they cost doulars, and your doulars given to us allow us to buy more of them. And bubble bubble and bubbles, solution and coffee. And coffee. And <laughs> I have a very expensive coffee <laughs> habit going on. <laughs> and I must support it. Help me. The internet bill is not cheap. Oh my gosh. No, y'all. Really, it is not. But your donated doulars do make it possible. So thank yeah. you so very much. I, I, we do really appreciate it. We are uh, as publicly supported as one can be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know YouTube doesn't. Anyway. <laughs> No, we really are here because of you guys. So thank yeah. you very much. We just I'm going to take this grid time to thank just our that, No, man, it's boring port grid time. It's a good time to say thank you and she's be appreciative. Just, and She's just drawing lines. Every one inch, I make a mark and I draw a line. Isn't that exciting? Mm. Now, listen, guys, this works. And I love, you know, we do this pretty deeply during Acrylic April. Um, and if you haven't heard of Acrylic April, it's when I go live every day for 30 days doing a small painting with y'all to teach y'all how daily painting can really transform your art practice and, and who you are as an artist, really. So but we do a lot of gridding there. And I know every time someone takes gridding on, it really frees them from the traceable because they see another way to get an image on. And then once you get the basic premise of it and the tools, then you can grid other things that you're excited to paint. Thank oh. you, Patty. Patty just gave us a gave us a very generous support for bubbles and coffee. So thank you, Patty. Here, wait, wait, wait. I know I'm like soaping up my. What do you got? You get the. It's, we'll take. I'm gonna take a coffee break. I'm gonna have some. some this coffee's for you, Patty. Actually, I think that everyone but you right now can hear the audio. <laughs> I think that. Hey, the, won't turn off. Help. <laughs> and it's out there somewhere. Oh man, that's like all. Yeah, see, I got a little music out there. Look, it's like my 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 uh, eat palette is all soapy. Check out my palette; it's just very bubbled. <laughs> Gotta reclaim clean, it. I'll, I'll it's it silly for me to tell you guys all the time: don't add glycerin to your paint, and then add a bunch of glycerin for, via bubble machine. <laughs> I gotta wipe off the, the tubes know. too. It's messy but fun. All right, so we have here a reference. All right, you got your reference. We have here a reference, as you do. You have a gridded reference. I don't you have, have a gridded reference. And what that does is it allows you to sketch in your objects and get kind of a sense of where everything is. Basically how this works is you just draw what's in that one square. Just that, you mm. know. So if I've got a little bit of the train that kind of comes down. And it comes down to maybe mid that square. That's what I do. And then I can come across here. I think this is three. This is almost four. So it's one, two, three, four in a bit of a five. So I go one, two, three, four in just a smidge of a five. You know how I did that? I do. I would never get that without the grid. I have to tell you all just really straight up. <laughs> it wouldn't be happening. And then the placement of this little um, nice headlight goes right here. But I can get that because I can see it on the grid. And then our circle, it's the front of this little part of the train where our wreath is going to go. I really like the wreath part. And all I've got to do if I'm trying to capture the size and scale of the circle is copy what I'm seeing in each square. So I'm not saying I won't have to kind of refine my circle as I go, but it's really going to help me. And we're still doing these live in the show, really basically so that you guys can see what's going on. So from up here, I go one, okay, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Just making sure. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, uh, 
you can get a little lost in the grid, so you want to definitely, you know, we'll use the grid to help you find your find your circle. Flynn got lost in the grid until he found his way through it. <laughs> yes, that's true. Don't know it's really relative to here. All right. But I appreciate the reference. <laughs> <laughs> you can now see that goes right into here. And then there's a bit of the train that goes off the side there. So it's just keeping me from having to really stress about all the weird little parts of the train that might normally be really hard for me, a non-train engineer, to relate to. Right? But you want to be able to get those things. So it's super important. And because that's there, I can kind of capture the angles of some of the stuff. Like that foreshortened perspective could be very hard for me normally. But because of this, it's not. And then I can see where I would want to put these little headlights. The other thing I'll tell you is, is that train enthusiasts are maybe the toughest critics on the Internet. And that's saying something. <laughs> but they are. And so you want to try to get things, I guess, in their approximate place that they actually go. Well, I didn't understand. Or you're going to get feedback. Yeah, I didn't understand that at first, but I think I do now. Hmm. So they're, they're sort of like car enthusiasts to the nth degree. Yes. And, and there's a reason. Because let's say this train that we're looking at right now. This train, yes. What, whatever it, train this is. Whatever train this is. They're, it, it's they a know what train this is, though. I don't know what train this is, but they do. Well, so here's the thing. Let's say there were 50 of this model train built. Each of the 50 were hand built. So each one is unique. So a train person would be able to look at this train and not only know what kind of train is, but specifically the train. Yeah, I think they will. And they, it, it's, it's not a matter of, oh, that's a 1969, you know, uh, Chevy SS Camaro. No, that is, you know, a 424 steamer, and that's Betsy the 424 steamer. Yeah, they'll know. know. She'll have a name. Yeah. And, you know, that's it. So there's, there are some cars like that. But well, and I think that's why Thomas the Train, that kind of animation was sort of sassy. Did you ever notice how sassy Thomas the Train was? Yeah. <laughs> the I actually, whole show was very sassy. <laughs> having having known some trains, or I should say some train people and vis-a-vis -vis trains, um, I, I can say that I kind of appreciate the uh, personality that was breathed into some of these characters. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so smoke, 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 smoke. I like this part because I get to go smoke, smoke, la, 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 la. smoke, 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 steam. And then we've got a nice little Steam. tree here. Smoke comes out the top. Steam comes out. You can be out. like tree, 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 tree. Steam comes out. I don't out have the top. to be that specific about this tree because it's going to kind of paint itself. And then we have some tree here that's going to be coming down, and it comes down to about the light. And then we have some distant trees, and we're going to have some smoke that comes back here. All of which is to me pretty exciting. So you can see, I actually gave you even more in the traceable. Not that hard to get in. So, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to take some phthalo blue, oh. phthalo green, All right? A little more phthalo green, man. I'm squeezing. You're, you're weird squeezing today. from the middle there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today. I don't here. know what to tell y'all. Some burnt sienna. All the middle today. This is messing up my tubes. I got to go through and correct my tubes. You're going to have to use your tube bringer and go fix all my tubes. Be and like, then yell Mom at me has been weird this month. They're all pressurized when they're done. You know, all, before these, I always think, I'm going to put my paint out in a pretty pattern that has a secret message, and then I never do it. <laughs> <laughs> then children happen. Child well, children always happen, right? So that's like a thing. Um, I definitely am going to want to put out some alizarin if I have any left in here. And I do have just enough for this particular image. Get some cad red for sure. 
I don't remember, sweetheart. Did I put Prussian blue in the list or I, um, I know. Da, 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 did I put Prussian blue or Doxazine purple? Let's see, Doxazine purple. I see. Okay, cool. And I see Thalo blue green shade, Thalo green blue shade. That always seems like a trick to me. Yep, I know they read weird. <laughs> Sipping it up. <sighs> you see any others? Uh oh yeah, there's other colors here too. You want to read some? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cad red medium, cad red, uh, cad yellow medium, thalo blue, thalo green, th titanium white, Mars black, diox purple. Okay, so I didn't put out a lizard crimson. So uh, nope, I don't see lizard crimson here. Ignore this. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought that you would be cheekier knife. and less awkward when it, I did it. I was like, oh, I'm going to be so cheeky and funny. Could, could you use a palette knife? I could have used a palette knife, but again, I was trying to be funny. Just, just funny, and it didn't work. So um, that's me being funny. Ha, ha, ha. It's like a Monty Python joke. It just made a mess. <laughs> it just made a mess. This is true. All right, so I'm going to take um, a little bit of my burnt sienna over to my thalo blue i've got a number 20 bright here it's just a small bright anything around a 10 and i'm going to make a very light background sky color like so light yo okay lighter than this and i'm going to gray it a bit too so just getting enough white into it to find oh right there see it's just bar barely even a thing mm. And if I need to get a little more brown into it, I will. And every time I add brown, it'll neutralize it a bit and take it into that winter sky color. Dip in the water. And we're going to really paint everything around the train. With this light, light color. Doesn't have to be smooth or anything. It's just we're painting everything around the train. I didn't put out um, tinting white, John, or zinc. Why is that? Did I put that color in? I didn't see it. Uh oh. All right, guys, that one we're going to have to. Have. I can add it. Huh? I yeah, can... I'm going to have to add that. I'm sorry, yo. That's okay. It really helps with the uh, um, mist. But if you don't have it, I'll show you what you could do to get through. But it will really impact um, how nice the mist comes out. Mm. So I, ha I have an excellent question for you to wax philosophical on. I would love to wax philosophically on a question. Okay, this is a good one. That's my favorite thing to do. So proud mother. Proud mother. Already you, you're after my own heart, proud mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, proud mother has been painting with us for a little while and is trying to find her niche. Like, what is my thing? And you know, trying to, I guess, sometimes you call it your voice. Mm -hmm. And it's having trouble. And do you have some advice for, like... I know I mentioned it earlier in the stream, but the reason that I started the Acrylic April is nothing helps you find your voice better than a daily painting because it breaks you down mm. and gets you out of your own way. And you start to have to really listen to yourself in that daily process, you know? I, I don't. Well, yeah, John hasn't done one yet. I had to listen to you in that daily process. Um, there's a real good example of this. Uh, Mark Bergeron, who's in our group, he has not stopped daily painting. And I see his voice coming out. Uh, there's Colleen Mucci. There's just quite a few people who, through that process of daily painting, have really found themselves. And, it, and what it really is essentially that you're doing is you're just getting out of your own way. Mm. We are all in our own way for hearing ourselves and being part of our own voice and really recognizing, oh, this, this style, this way of putting down paint, these subjects, these things, they're specifically true to me. And when you're trying to find your voice, what you've got to be first and foremost is utterly authentic, which is scary because sometimes your utterly authentic is not relatable to everybody around you. and Oftentimes, as you move closer and closer to your own voice, you'll get more and more weird negative blowback, which is really challenging to deal with. 
So, you know what I mean? Just sort of stay on. I do. Yeah. It's like being in Labyrinth and they're all going, no, no, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> and you start to like question yourself. Notice that I'm not putting the paint on any specific space. I'm just basically giving it a nice. Random jump all over the surface. Maybe yeah, just coating it in and making place. sure that we've got. Might as well take it all the way here, even though I know I'm going to come back with a dark color. So I get that in, right? Yep. And that's going to really let me start to see what I've got and get going. Now, I'm going to make a little more of this up. As you do. Well, somebody does. <laughs> you do for sure. Somebody anyways. I'm just mixing it up. And I might put a little more blue and brown into it just to kind of deepen it a smidge. A smidge. You might even get a little blue and green. I'm just trying to pull a darker color in here, guys. But one that isn't so much darker than this guy, right? Like right around there. Perfect. Because we've got to put in some weird, wispy, dis distant little trees. Now, I'm going to really make my life easy to do that by taking my number four fan. And I'm going to load in some of this paint. I don't feel like I have enough of it, but we'll work it out. Get that loaded all into my brush here. And hopefully we'll see right away if I've gotten it dark enough, but not too dark. So we're going to come up on this inside of the train. And I'm going to use the corner, this corner, and I tap the fan up and down. And then I'm going to start to put in some branches. The issue with this is you want to have a nice ample amount of paint. So I may have to get into my artist knife again. And come in here and go a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, right? Making that color. Because we've got to get enough where we can see it. And have to be able to load it amply onto the fan. And I kind of would like the background to still be somewhat um wet but if it's not it'll still be okay but what we're doing whenever you're trying to make a distant tree be it a fan a pine tree or distant birch or distant little hill trees basically what you're going to want to be doing is coming in slightly darker than the background see that's a nice ample amount of paint there mm. so that's going to make what's next e easier I'm going to come here and I like to kind of work this going up and you can see that instantaneously it starts to give us that pine look, which is nice. You can always get different little bits of color. I love, can you see how it easily pulls in small amounts? Mm, yeah. And if you want the branches to go up and smile, you need the handle of the brush to be upward. If you do the handle of the brush downward, the branches will curve down. But if you'll notice, these branches have a slight upward curve. So when we're doing those, and it's a fairly... One could say these trees are happy, and one could say these trees are little, but they couldn't say those things at the same time without getting in trouble. <laughs> I don't want... I don't know if that's actually pursued, but I know it's, it's just, potential. It's, the way that, that YouTube has lost its mind lately, who knows? <laughs> and, you know, you just want to be respectful. You know, you're not trying to. It's, it's one of those hard things, man. Ever-changing landscape of YouTubery. And it is, isn't it? It's, I think as creators, we just try to be respectful of each other in the time, you know. Really? That's, I think that's the... <laughs> what, what, I think it's the best thing that we can do to guide ourselves. I think that that's not how the, 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 the platform is playing. No. No. But those who stick around tend to play that way. It's like you've never seen Fousey Tube. 
wait for the platform wars. I don't mean to differ wars. with you, but yo. <laughs> oh, no, that's true. This... Now, as All I'm right. coming here, I can come in. I'm going to get a little of my kind of docks purple and my blue mm. into the scene that makes a nice deep tone. Deep. And I'm going to come here and right on this edge, I want to maybe even more blue than that. Kind of put in some little shadows that are going to be playing for the next tree. I can't take them up too much. These are these little shadows that will be down here doing their little thing. You're playing with me. Jumping around. around something. <laughs> so can you see that the upward handle and... Yeah, that you can definitely see. You can get smiling tree branches when you point that handle up and it makes and sometimes sense. it's nice to bring a little bit of the shadows out into the tree that you have i may even come on this side and add some of those there there we go and that'll be nice when we get the next tree into it now we also have very distant and in a similar color scheme. It's just some distant little shrubberies that we could, you know, really talk about here. And see, it's just very soft, isn't it? These are barely seen branches. Playing against a very, very light sky. Now I might add the blue here. And then come and add some of these to go behind this tree. They sort of dance out behind uh, its little front tree. And you want to talk about those as well. Doing well. So little bits of trees are being represented. Now coming forward, We've got kind of this green and brown tree. So I'm going to take a little bit of my green. And just mix together the beginning of that kind of green and brown tree. And it's got some yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of the kind of warmth into some of its branches. So we have the darker value here into the tree and then we have kind of a yellow on top not fun to see the pink get mixed together yeah. there you go so two values two valuable values and another thing i can do is i can take a little bit of the black and brown and i just mix that right on the brush and i can even Come up here and say there's a few maybe little trunks that we're going to see. A few, not a lot. Now, if you are, what I'll say is if you don't have a fan, you can do similar shapes, just dabbing a bright or some other type of brush up and down. If you do get a fan, just make sure they're stiff. I don't know how much of those little trunks we're going to have showing, but at least we have a start. Loading up on my number four fan. Come here. Do a similar thing. We like the corner, don't we? Mm. It's a nice little top of a tree. Lots of paint. Almost like a palette knife for all the paint that it's wanting. And just putting in those little shapes fun to do fun to do i'm going to sort of marry these against each other is that nice looking like the way it's layering mm -hmm. this is going to be the ultimate train painting when it's done just tapping, brush upwards, trying to get a smiling little 
little pine tree. Now I will add some upward little branches over here, but we're going to come top them with some yellow. I'm just giving myself some shadows to build on. And some stuff to add smoke over, right? Because that's we got to add some smoke over it. And this is going to let the smoke really show. Some of the little stuff is sticking out. Back into my background color. I need enough for it to offload under the canvas. So sometimes I will add a little water to it just to make sure it'll offload for me. We have a few bits of distant light tree afoot here that we want to imply. See how we're implying it? Yeah. There's something in the distance, very light, very soft, very chill. Now let's add some highlights to that little forward tree. And we've got the yellow ochre onto here. Even more, really. So it's still green, but it's just this light green. Nice little bit of highlight there. And I'm tempted to even get some more white out and pop another little level of highlight on it. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of smoke in front of that, but feeling like that's well lit will be lovely for us. So I've added some white. I'm just making some light pops of light color. Hmm. That's a good question for you when you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. I'm just popping some highlights. So Angie was asking about acrylic April. Yes. And she's saying, is acrylic April just a personal t challenge to set aside some time for yourself to paint? What is that? It, well, I mean, like officially, if you want to do it live with the group, you show up April 1st. No joke. And we paint every day live together in chat as a community in April. However, the program is up all year. So you could do last year's acrylic April in January. It's just, you know, you just want something that's 30 days. You're painting every day for 30 days. You can follow the whole program, whether you're with us or not with us. The group is there on Facebook. The community is there. It's an all year thing in that kind of a way. So I highly recommend deeply, deeply, deeply that if it's something you're thinking about, don't you know, don't wait. You can start now. But if you know that you're more likely to do it because you're with the group, I just mix blue and black, you know, then definitely hit it with the group. What I'm doing is just putting in a few deeper highlights, right? And uh, shadows. So we're starting to see, doesn't that tree have a nice little kind of bit to it? Now we're going to put in some trunks here and a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> a bunch of stuff. Technical terms. Put out some more blue. I'm going to put out a little more burnt sienna and more phthalo green. Hopefully not squeezing from the center of the two. <laughs> I have tons more blues, so don't worry. <laughs> there we go. So there's some more colors that are definitely, definitely out there. And we've got to put some trunks going up. I say let's get into a number four round to get a trunk in. All right. So this is a number four round. It's just going to give me nice control over my trunk. And the trunk is basically almost black. So I'm going to take a little blue and a little black and mix them together and create a very cool dark color. And we've got one little trunk kind of coming towards the outer edge here. Let's paint that up. I'm 
you know, right off the edge of the canvas, this trunk. A lot of it's going to be covered. But it's nice to know where it is. And then it's got a little friend that maybe is going to come down a little deeper, is sitting over some. Just stroke that up right off the canvas, your secondary tree. Nice little trunk. Hopefully we're going to see lots of this train, just like we did our really good three hoot still life. Mm -hmm. I imagine this is going to be uh, gifted out quite a lot too. Christmas train. Yeah, <laughs> different people. Now while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of make these little marks that are here of branches that we're distantly seeing, right? between the trunks. I'm trying to keep those sort of the mishy-mashy way that things are. Down there, they're more delicate. I might even go ahead and Make a few here. Because even as we put our other types of oh, yeah. branches out, these kinds of weird little details will really help our tree feel like, oh, I'm a tree. See if I want to come back here and add a little trunk there. It just helps. Hmm. Now you can. Always wonder if you're walking in Cinnamon's Forest and you meet a confused tree and it doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, it could happen. Could. What are you? I'm a shrubbery. Awfully tall to be a shrubbery. You're not from around here, are you? I just wouldn't argue with the talking tree. That would be my advice to you is if you run into the forest and there's a tree talking. There's only one thing you should say. Yes, sir. No. <laughs> Go. I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so just nice little, these little twiggly bits. And we'll still have, you know, lots of little pine things, but it's just nice to say, all right, I know I'm going to have this bit here happening. There's also a couple little bits of highlight there. So I'm going to take some of this green and, and yellow that I had from earlier, just because it's a convenient. I can grab some brown. <laughs> it's funny how that works, right? And I'm going to just pop a couple bits of dappled highlight. Add some white to that. Maybe that little spot here. Just just the bits of dappled light will be quite lovely. Mm. These trees are more forward than the other trees, so it's helpful in your painting to have just a titch more detail on them. They're also a good bit darker in their shadows, so we're going to do the blue and black as our base tree. Mm. What? I know. Crazy, but we are. And I'm going to come up here and... Start using my fan again, still upwards. And I might need to mix out, guess what? An ample amount. An ample? An ample amount of the blue and black. And I can always get more blue, so I'm going to just go excited with it. Feels like a lot, right? 
and just there's a nice big clump of branches right here so let's talk about those Uh, zoom out so we can see how you're holding your hand there. Yeah, just holding it upwards, letting those little downward branches happen. Now you can always come and add a little, if you want to pull some of those needles down, you can always bring the fan in from the opposite direction and do that. So there's a lot of tweaking, delightful little tweaking that you can get into. Look at those little pines. This train is solid in the pines, is it not? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a little bit more right here. I guess I went over a highlight. I'll have to put some highlight back. And right here, you know, coming, coming out. I'm going to put my highlights back in a second. I'm just trying to get these little bits of shadows. Mm. Shadows in the shadow. Now, what size fan brush is this? This is a number four. Which that's kind of a, your, that's a medium-ish. Yeah, it's very small, perfect for this size canvas. If I was doing a bigger canvas, I might get a slightly bigger fan. If I was doing a bigger canvas. Now, just in all fairness, not all fans are made the same. No, they that really is, are not. The Sherpa fan is a particularly stiff, fil particularly stiff filament brush. And I only say that so that if you're at home and you're not getting the same results out of your fan brush. You're going to want a stiff one. It could be that it's the fan brush itself. Cinnamon's fan brush is designed for acrylic paint, so it's very, very stiff. If you're not using that, it could be part of the issue. I'm going to, I took a little bit of my blue-gray color over to this little mishmash here, and I'm going to get some light, light color going on. And I'm going to say thank you to Mark, who's giving us some support out here, some our patronage support, but he's for, for trees, steam trains, bubbles, and coffee. <laughs> so thank you very thank much, you. Mark. We appreciate break. it. Thank all, thank all of you guys for making mm. sure that we can do this. It is truly a blessing for us to be able to come out here and goof off and paint and stuff and drink coffee. Drink as much coffee <laughs> as can be drunk. So guess what? Again, more of these little branches being everywhere. Between coffee and bubbles, there's branches. Until this train can break free. Just playing with the branches. There's more white. I like how the, the, the glycerin is like all over my palette. <laughs> Blah. I just That's okay. a little brown into it. I'm just trying to you know, show some of that more dense forest space that we tend to have. Getting that in there. But we're not done. However, while we're having a rest, while we're having a thing, I'm going to take a number eight cat's tongue. You could use a number eight round or a number eight bright. And I'm going to get some of our dark color. Oh, you're and I'm going to come up here. Now I will finish it out with my um, fan, but this is so solidly dark that I didn't want to not get into it, you know? I do. And also this will let me kind of paint around stuff sort of tidily, which I also want. Because we're trying to say this is coming through a really kind of primal deciduous forest. Mm-hmm. Right. And that requires some deciduous trees to do. <laughs> Super primal deciduous forest that man has cut a swath through and laid a steam train on. That's what we do. I'm it's getting a little more of my phthalo green into my deep green mix. How we monkeys roll. And I'm going to put some of these greener branches in my forest here. Mm. Mm. 
They're not everywhere. But they are. You're jumping. Oh man, that's coming together. It's like I'm trying to stay close, but so the more I zoom out, that more it's turning into just like some some gorgeous deciduous forest. You you just said it. Yeah, it do that. Now I've got my little fan brush, and I'm gonna. I'm now kind of on the edge, and what I'm doing is I'm using it to get these nice little crazy little leaf marks, right? Mm. So this is all just wild here. Wild, maybe a little bit of the yellow, couple places, and I might even take a little of this just a smidge and uh, highlight a couple. Yeah. Yeah, just to exaggerate the colors, the color schemes that we are playing with, because we are playing with some color schemes. Now I'm going to have to take some of these past where I've got my train gridded in for it to look like it's well thought out. Right. Just sort of. And I'll just. Provide those layers. I'm going to tap in some texture right here. So when we're looking at the painting, it feels like tree texture. A little bit of that kind of brownie bark color. These weird little branches that happen. Get back. Come on, get back. You know what I forgot to do? Nope. Step by step. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Are you That's intentionally what? not telling me to do it? No. Okay. I, you know, <laughs> what I will say is that I got a couple things going on back here. Do you? Sometimes. Just a few? Sometimes. Me too. I forget. Sorry about that, guys. I would have loved to give it to you. But I'll try to get one from the film video. If if John gets sometimes full shots of it, I can. Sometimes. Sometimes. Can, if you get those there's... shots, I can. Now, right now, I'm gonna start to paint in the bases, like the the kind of the base, every the stuff that's behind on the behind these red bits and behind on the train. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll use my cat's tongue just to cover a bit of it up. So I'm gonna just get some black. Just to start out at first. Oh. Uh, the trees are turning out really great. That just. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. Super happy with the tree. Yeah. Now, every once in a while, I might get some different, like, little bit of different value just so I can be like, oh, this part of the train is a little different. Mm. And a lot of this comes down, we're not going to see it because there's so much smoke. So, so you a really, really... You're just trying to get the shape in there. We're just getting the deep values, the deep shadows on the train and the distant objects that are kind of like structures that are back on it. Mm -hmm. Because what we'll do is we're going to just be highlighting a few of the things and it's going to show what they are by the highlights. Believe it or not, the photo does that for us as well. Hmm. But we want to do that for ourselves. Just because you're defiant like that? Yeah. Because I'm defined. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I did want to make a nice turn, so I'm going to come back and erase. Oh. For some of these detailed turns, I may have to get into my number four round like I am right now and be like, oh, yeah, no, behave. You want it to behave. It doesn't want to behave. No, of course It's not. a train. Hmm. 
Just pulling in some of these. Kind of crazy values. Maybe some here. So this is what we're going to call blocking in. Still going into my black, still using my number four. And what I'm really doing is just getting the substructure of paint in. So that later when I have to put in other objects, we're good. Now what's interesting is we come down here, we're going to change up some of our color space, like some of our color space might have a bit of, you know, a lighter value to it. So I'll just grab whatever that is and come across here between the top red grill and the bottom red grill. Under here, I'm going to take a little bit of my Docs Purple and my Cad Red together. So it'll still have a red value, but it'll be deep. So sort of under here, through here. See how we're doing that first value? Just painting that down. Now I want to get my dark green color, my sort of forest color. I'm going to take this down here. I'm going to come off the side. Won't really matter until we mess things up. Hmm. But there's the grill goes bigger than this, but there's the space that's Definitely behind the train. And this will help us hit that highlight and talk about that a bit. So just a little yellow ochre and that kind of thing. I'm going to get back into this little mix here. If I come around this and here. Because again, we're going to have a lot of mist. No point in spending hours and hours and hours detailing out where we're going to have so much mist, we're going to see none of it. And, and there'll be a couple places where we're going to have so much mist, we're going to see none of it. A little gray square there. As you have. Hmm. You know, another little bit kind of here. And maybe a little bit there. Now, the red that is this bumper, I'm actually going to do with, interestingly enough, not Doc's Purple, but with Thalo Blue. And it's going to make a brick color making it significantly see how the difference is between the, the purple and the yeah she's making some subtle differences bring that in here and so all we're doing is kind of looking at our reference and saying where do we see what color we're not being very specific yet about what we're painting or how it's going to be painted we're just dealing with what it is and how we want to do it. And I take this far enough where I know I can add mist and stuff to it. And I'm going to come into here, actually, and even black this up through here into one value. Can you see what we're doing? Yeah. We're going to black this up into one value so that when we have mist, it has something underneath it as well that's quite deep. 
mist is going to be the fun part. Mm -hmm. Going to take a little bit of my blue, smidge of my black. To come through here really with the blue and the black because that's going to be the basis of our snow. Which will be fun. And we're going to splatter some snow too. As you want to. I for sure am going to want to. So a little bit of blue and black here. To go on that side of the track. And a little bit of this blue and black in here to go under the train for the snow. We'll come back and hit that as snow later. And we're going to take a little bit of our black here. Whoa! Sometimes I have to put this on a lip because my uh, easels for big canvases, not for boards. And they slip off. That's all I'm really saying about that right now. I might come under here with this darker value. Going a little bit right there. So just these small amounts of color just to talk about some things, which we will be overall. Bring that black places highlighting and dealing with look at us go we're kind of awesome aren't we mm -hmm. a little touch up color anywhere i know i, I know i'm going to have mist here but just because i'm going to have mist here doesn't mean that i don't want a good amount of color underneath everything so that when the train pulls forward with the detail and the colors and the highlights that what happens is is that we are really set now i need to mentally kind of take this in for a second i would love to reheat my coffee and i can take some questions before we begin begin the second half of this and just wrap this painting up hmm okay so let me think about the best way of approaching that i think the best thing for you to do is to start by uh break okay. and front, stretch go, go to the front camera, front camera. Front camera. Okay. all right so from here, this is what you're going to talk about. One, your selection of this, uh, of how you, because I'm going to go back through and scanning through the chat. Okay. There's, a, there's cool. a number of questions that I'm going to have you kind of talk about here. One, your process for selecting images. Mm -hmm. Two, what you plan on doing this holiday season. And three, uh, how, uh, a, a bit about the patronage system and how people could be part about what we do here. Because okay. I'm just sort of, that's a real quick scan back. Oh, and... Uh, how come you're not wearing any jewelry? But we'll get to that a little okay. bit more later. So uh, the first one, how do I select images? I have several uh, resource image sites um, that I use. Uh, I pay for the rights to those images. And then very often I digitally collage those images together. So like there's a lot of digital collaging to this particular image because I just couldn't find a trained image that was working for me. It was super frustrating. So I realized I sort of had to digitally create that fantasy of that moment that I really wish you could capture, but I don't think you can capture in photography. <laughs> and also, shocking lack of wreaths on trains. I mean, they super need them. So uh, that's happening. And, and basically, I go through and I have these different groups, these different social media places, and I look at your art and I read your comments. We get 78,000 messages every 28 days. I'm not even exaggerating that. And um, I just get that feedback. Like I actually take that feedback in. And so sometimes that also will influence the types of things I choose to paint. And then of course there's things that I just personally want to paint. So the, all those factors come into play when I'm deciding what to do. Um, I try to make sure I don't ever just grab somebody's artwork off of Pinterest and repaint it here. Um, it is definitely all through uh, legitimate legal licensing sites for artists. Um, on top of that, let's see. Um, what was it? What, what was it? Uh, holiday. Holiday. Oh, what am I going to do this holiday? So I think we have another owl cat coming for sure. There's tomorrow some beautiful snowy birch trees with red cardinals. I kicked it off with the uh, fall snow. I'm going to probably keep going into some of the snow images. Um, you're going to probably see a lot more galaxy hit 
Uh, we're doing uh, Facebook Lives now twice a week, Monday evenings and Friday mornings at the crack of dawn. So it's like Monday evening at 6 o'clock or Friday at 8.30 in the morning. And those videos then get scheduled as a premiere here on the YouTube channel on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. So if you don't have Facebook or you don't do Facebook, that's when you would catch any of that stuff you see me talking about is on Wednesday nights in the premiere. Cool thing about a premiere is I'm in the chat. We're rewatching the film video and I'm in the chat live while it's going on and you can ask me any question that you right. want. And wonderful. I love very hot. So um, that's really, really good. Uh, the other thing is, uh, the other place, the other stuff I'll show you and maybe the mods can give a link um, are these two little babies, right? So we have that. The mods can link you to where those are. If these get enough engagement, then they become lessons on here. So any of the stuff from the retreat channel, if it gets love uh, and takes off and you guys are really into it, I'll add that to the calendar. Um, so, yeah, it's busy and I kind of tend to work through the holidays. I don't really take the holidays off. It's an insanity I have. Um, and then how you can participate in the patronage. So the patronage, <laughs> it's on the website. The mods will link you the thing. Um, it ranges from a dollar uh, up to like, I think maxed out $35. Um, and basically how the patronage works is at different levels, you get different rewards. All of them are crazy rewards. I'm going to be really candid with that. Um, and they're really about me getting to do things creatively that I can't do on YouTube because the way YouTube is right now. So if I want to do a multi-part into the perpetuity of a big canvas, I can do that. If I want to do watercolor, I can do that. If I want to do charcoal, I can do that. If I want to do figure painting, I can do that. And so that lets me do that. And it kind of really sustains us and keeps us going because we don't always lean into the things that um, would get a lot of AdSense yeah. money. That's not our, our first thing isn't to hit what YouTube wants to pay a lot of AdSense for. We want to hit what will help our students paint. So um, that's why I do all that. Is that, is that? That's it, I think. Okay. We're right, good? I'm going to sip my coffee now. You have your coffee? I feel I like have, I've earned it. I have Before I painted too. this train. But you didn't, you didn't. I would only paint this train for you. What did I miss? Well, I'm sipping coffee. Mm, I don't know. Mm, you're right. What happened? I knew. Did you do it. a minute? No. Uh, like 45 seconds. I did it for 30 seconds and it wasn't hot enough, so I did it more. I told you it's it was hot. hot coffee. This oh. is like. McDonald's hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's just. Is it too soon? Oh, why am I not wearing jewelry? Oh, yeah. Because I wanted to be on time and I didn't want to waste time looking for jewelry. It's, yeah, I put it aside. I just didn't have it near me when I was like, we got mic'd up and I was like, ah, hoodie. <laughs> that's all that that's, happened. You know. Oh, hoodie. and we're okay. Um, Kappa. I've been getting a bunch of questions about Kappa. Um, and if that's if that's going to hurt and how that's going to affect us and the honest truth is uh, we don't know uh we think we're going to be okay we're we were already following those guidelines so we'll probably continue it on our end we've always been within ftc regulations as a creator i always go to that site and check what's going on and make sure i have disclosures and affiliates and we don't collect that on kids and you know but the part where youtube does stuff we don't have any control over that None. um in any way and how they'll interpret that for their platform uh, regardless of what the legality of it is we also don't have any control um we have followed what they've currently said they want from us um that means that fan art art based on disney characters that kind of stuff um you you guys may never even see it because it will stop being surfaced out and you won't be able to add it to playlists and it will um not have ads on it it will it, it'll be there if you're looking for it directly on the channel but for all intensive purposes, it will have vanished. You know, much Fun, like, right? Yeah, much like everything else. If you go to our website, yeah. yardsherpa.com. That's where it's going to be. Calendar, on videos, those areas, that's where you're going to find our stuff. Yeah. That's what we do. That's so, how. But that's what's, we are not, however, going to stop. That's why we have a second channel. Go support the second channel. That's our backup. That's like our save point. We're like, <laughs> okay, we got two. Two. You can kill one, but we got two. Two. <laughs> so go by and love that. It's weird. It's fun. It's goofy. Go by and love it. Tell me if you want something as a lesson and, you know, come by here and give this lots of love as well. Cause who knows? Right. But it's not about that kids watch the channel. It's about the way data is collected on children 
and the way uh, the um, algorithm is targeting ads, therefore targeting ads to kids, which is terrible, and they should stop. Mm. So I am glad they took an action. I just wish the action wasn't a complete, like, you know, torpedo to, to a the torpedo side. to all creators. That would have been, especially those of us in the art segment, would have been cool. But we're going to hang in no matter what. Where like, is the second channel, Angie asks? The Art Sherpa Retreat. <laughs> so it's out there. You, it's maybe, out there. Do we have a link in the description down below? Uh, I didn't have a link, but I'm <gasps> sure the mods will drop a link uh, to like Sherpa. the current video. And we're going to try to get those up almost every day. I paint every day and I'm warming up. John was like, we should capture those warm ups and turn them into a thing. And I'm like, okay. Because the warm ups turn into lessons. So it is a weird deal. All right. Blame it on me. It's fine. Yeah, it, it, it is his thing. Are you guys ready to train? Have you stretched? Have you had your sort of like mid show? We are. We are. Mid show. Mid -show Let's do the mid show shake. Yeah. Mm, mm. We're painting live. Yeah, you're, we are. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> whatever you're doing is not painting, Sherpa. <laughs> I, I gather that. I get it. I get that it is not. I'm going to put out some more white paint. Because. And we, some more blue paint. We're going to need it. You are going to need it. You don't even know how much you're going to need it. I'm going to get my reference back out. Because where it's close to me, I have an easier time figuring out what details I want to capture. Because in painting... Um, you don't necessarily want to capture every detail, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, darn it. I needed fresh water. <laughs> oh, fresh water. I'll get fresh water while you're getting going. It's okay. Okay. All right. So, um, I'll talk about some things here. No, you just keep going. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start capturing some highlights and getting the stuff. Now, I really feel the way to do that is going to be the phthalo blue and kind of white and black and kind of getting those highlights in there and capturing little bits of the, um, elements of the train that are structural good luck to us on that to do that i feel like a small and tidy bright is going to be our friend so this is a small and tidy bright <laughs> this is a number two ruby satin i'm going to get a little of my blue and a little of my white into my brush oh wow you're amazing you're the best you're incredible he likes to hear that <laughs> <laughs> especially when he can't retort. I've just put out some more phthalo blue. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come and capture some of these little highlights I'm seeing. So light right along here, along this little edge, is a highlight that we're seeing. So let's, let's see that. And then coming forward, another little highlight. This could blend down a bit. So it's mm. not really going to be, oh, I got every single single thing. A lot of times it's going to be like, oh, I, I got the essence of that thing, right? I'm going to capture a little bit of this. All right. where, where is this white coming from that I have on my brush? I don't know. It's not my brush. Uh, Did you not dry something? Probably. That's what it is. Probably that's what it is, but you just kind of go along. Now you just go into the white with the gray. Now I, now I want this Just white. lean into it. Just lean into what you've got. Come here and sort of pull that reflection down. And again, you know, as you're going, you just want to capture what you're seeing. So that's pretty good. Come here in the front. That's That's a pretty good one that off and then wherever I kind of don't have a nice perfect square I can just come in with a clean brush and take care of it and then you deepen what you can deepen yeah you take some black and you're like oh in the shadows go you yep that's it that's how you do it because it's a black train kind of works with your black dog too and again, there's, there are details that you're really going to want to lean into and then details that maybe you're not going to lean into as strongly. I'm going to get some of my sky color. I'm going to come here and maybe make a pipe. Then here maybe another like little pipe 
coming up. Find those, find those colors, find those things, and just paint what you've got. Hey, yes. I missed, I missed some Patty Bubble support. Thank you, Patty. Patty did bubbles. She Is did it bubble time, support. Patty. Thank you, Patty. Patty. I sometimes when I'm getting back to things, I don't always see the chat catching up. So ah, it takes you know me what? Minute. I'll take that moment. Double. Like, what are we doing this Saturday? We're just painting a train. We're painting you know, a train. We don't gotta rush through. This is some. We never. We don't. I say. I say never in the changing landscape of our weather. Texas never sees winter, or Houston never sees snow. So these are our Texas snowflakes. That's right. John got these for me so I could have my own snow. Adding a little bit of white to my blue blue. I'm gonna come along here. Along the top. Following those little edges. Just, it's amazing how the blue, like, really stands out, too. Yeah. Just very light pressure with this, too, guys. Then I can come back with my dark color. And just sort of blend in a little bit of that metallic. Back into my blue and white. Put a little reflection right here. Maybe a little bit here. And sometimes you'll need even more white to pick up the reflection. You'll be... See what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. And that's what you're just trying to do. Don't, don't, you don't have to catch every screw. You don't have to catch every nut. But you just want to get the sense of what they're doing. Now, on the headlamp, I'm rinsing out my brush. I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow and a little of my cad red. I'm going to make kind of an orange. Just to start. And if you guys want, actually, I'm going to exaggerate the glow of the headlights. Just so you know. So they're more like magical headlights. You've got a little print out there of your reference so that you can see it. Right. Sometimes you need a private print out of your reference so you can see the little sucker. <laughs> Sometimes you don't. Little block, little block. Just, you know, hit these little bits of, don't capture every bit of every detail of every gear, but you do want to capture some of what you see going on. Some of what you've got going on will be awesome. Take my blue along here. And then for sure this does a really cool kind of inset thing. Probably important. <laughs> Probably matters to the function of the train. So I'm choosing to maybe talk about it a bit in paint. That's all we got going on is sometimes we talk about things in paint. Luckily, we've got so much mist here. We're going to be just really enjoying most of what we have going on. I can come in with a little bit of my cad red. And even if it's got a little blue in it, I can bring it in to some lighter ranges.
a little bit. They were asking, blue as you go back. I, I was sort of uh, chatting back and forth with some folks mm -hmm. in the chat in here. So they were really asking, you take time to uh, go ahead and print your reference image out here on a high quality photo paper. Yes, I do. And that's one of the reasons why you have, uh, you're able to get pretty good color accuracy. It yes. helps me, man. There was no point in making a digital plane here. And <laughs> took a while to make that smoke, yo. <laughs> There's no point in doing all that and then, you know, not giving yourself what you need. All right, I'm going to get a little of that purple, red here. And these are some of the purple tools. Purple and red. If you're at home, one of the things you can do is uh, you print high qual you know, high color photo references for yourself. Yes. And I don't like to squint at a phone. I think it's rough to do the references on a phone. Um, now it could be just where I am in life, right? Like after this live today, I'm going to go have an eye appointment. Um, <laughs> so maybe I'm just there in life guys, but to me, it seems like what you can see, you can paint what you can't see, you can't paint. And I'll, uh, just as a technical support tip, I'll say that, uh, you can buy good quality budget inks online and in bulk from different sources. And uh, four by six borderless paper is normally accepted on most printers. So you can print a really nice four by six full color reference image and it not take up too much space and be cost effective. You really can. We, we actually did that for I a while. I just added time. some uh, yellow to that to just get some values to this from bumper. So see, we're just getting that in. I'm going to switch to my number four round. I'm going to come here. So grateful for that uh, fresh water, John. Mm. Do you want some more? Uh, no. I do want to, however, clean off my glasses. Look what I've done. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's like, I'd like to see, but then I did that. So we're just going to keep revealing train, revealing train, revealing train. And then uh, we get to paint the wreath. That that's our whole reward for our day. And then uh, mist. <laughs> So, lucky us. So I'm going to come here and just very gently come around my little light. I'm going to get a little bit of my black on here. Oh, so I'm going to, Craig just sent us a lovely little note here. He oh. says, last train to Sherpaville. Thank you for all he, all you do. And a little, gives us some studio support. Oh my goodness, Craig, I bubble you. Thank you, Craig. And to all of the folks out here who support us, you. we love These love Texas you snowflakes are for you. Make it possible to e even have a Sherpaville. Yeah, there would be no Sherpaville without you. I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow. I don't mind actually at this stage that a little black is getting into it because I just want to see the shape of the light more than anything. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Mm -hmm. After a while, crocodile. So it's just it's just important if I need a little little bit of highlight there, and I can get that pretty easily. And just add those. And then the other trick is to add a little highlight where you can, even on the headlight. See how we're doing? Little headlights. Yeah. Just, just work it out for yourself. You know you want to. May Kelly just sent over a little support. Actually, not a little support, quite a big support, saying, you are amazing, Sherpa. Oh, is it okay if I sip coffee and dance to that? You can dance. You can. You know what? Dancey dance. I'm going to go forward. You can dancey dance anytime I'm gonna you dance want I'm going to dance the music in my head. This you is know, the music in my head. You can dance the music in your head, and I will dance Artists the should, music. Oh, wow. That's a look, isn't play. it? My glasses. <laughs> I don't even care no more. Boom.
See, we can listen to music that you can't. I know, it's so me. Ah! Bubbled up. I just really need the coffee. But we're, we're having a hard party, and we're, we're happy that you guys can be here with us. So thanks. Seriously, that is so true. I have to tell you, um, it, I'm so grateful for the people that, that, you know, give time and show up. We're oh. going to come around with a light highlight around these headlights, guys. Thank you, May, for making it possible for us to do this. We really appreciate it. We really do. Now we're all quiet and introspective. Because i got to do this little teeny tiny line. I need to concentrate. <laughs> and I'll mumble in gratitude because people are being so generous for us. So it's all... You mumble in gratitude. I'm going to ha- add a shadow now to this. I will, I will mumble in gratitude. Mumble, mumble. Mumble, mumble, mumble. And then I'm going to add another little shadow. Just so we can catch that. Catch a little bit inside this light as well. And maybe a little bit inside here as well. A little, little bit of that. Guess what? Mm. I'm going to take a little white. Go over to my CAD. Okay, my... my Palette is so full of bubbles. <laughs> it is bubblicious. It is something. You're gonna have to new palette. I might. I don't mind though. Actually, it's probably slowing down the drying time of the paint. <laughs> it's got a thin coat of glycerin. Well, you know, it, there is some irony here because the paint companies uh, add a lot of anti foaming agents, <laughs> so I've just basically really undermined all of that. I'm just adding a little bit of that into the headlamp. And then also coming here, just getting some of that. That was a little bit of yellow and white. Hmm. What we're doing. Add a little bit of yellow and white here, too. Now, it can be a good idea to take a little bit of your CAD red and some of your yellow. You get varying levels of orange. Oranger than what I just grabbed. Put some of that in. Okay. I very much enjoy it. After a little of that. And an almost white, but not purely white. Kind of is the, the high point of the headlamp. There we go. What are we doing? We're rocking it. We got so much train stuff happening here. There's so what I'm going to do is I've got to look past my glasses to see the mix and then come here and do this. So I'm going to come on this edge. i come along that edge. And then we're going to make some little reflections. Hmm. Just right there. Oh, I think I'll add one here. Pretty good. Maybe one right there. There we go. So we've got that kind of showing up, don't we? Yeah. Train is coming out of the blue. And that's what you want. You want to train them. And get back into my bright. And I'm going to get back into my blue and white. Making some of these little downward reflections. Because we've got the... Crossbar. The nice thing about the number two bright is that it's got some already sort of square shape to it, so... Come here and fill that in. Maybe fill this in. Get a little crossbar here. So we're not trying to, like, say everything, but we're trying to say some stuff, if that makes sense. Don't say everything, but do say some stuff. 
in here with some like darker colors, some some shadow, right? We gotta we gotta get the shadow going in there. So as we pick up bits of what we can see, we also pick up bits of what we can't see. Just little hints of it. Little highlight right here. See how we're pushing that out? We want to highlight that a bit. We're patinaing what we've got here. Let me grab a little bit of my blue. These are just some like bits that will be important to train people. <laughs> They're just nice structures, things that you can do. Let's highlight that. I'm just tapping that brush into it with a little white and blue highlight. A little highlight. And same here, just every once in a while tap in a little highlight because there is one. That's why you notice the object in the first place. It's because there were highlights. There's a little thing happening right there. So you're just trying to sort of capture that somewhat. I'm going to nondescriptly through here and add some of this. This is for when we missed. And there's going to be bits of things that are peeking out. Guess what we get to do now? What's that? The really fun part. The little the bulk, the pressure head. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be the super, super funnest Boiler. part of the whole thing. The so my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my blue. And I'm going to come through here. Although the steam is going to be fun, too. The steam is going to be real fun. And the snow is going to be fun. And the tracks are going to be fun. Well, all right, I won't lie to you. The tracks aren't going to be that fun. But they'll look nice when they're there. Steam is probably going to be pretty nerve-wracking. Steam is going to be really fun. And this is not the steam. That Rose the Hat is after, I will have, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. A couple King fans just cracked up. <laughs> John and I were talking the other day about, like, Stephen King villains. And uh, I was saying, like, Stephen King villains, like, if you just say them out loud, don't sa sound that scary until you get into a book or something. What's wrong? No, no, no. Okay. Something on my lip. Be better just to say something on my lip. <laughs> I couldn't see. Uh, I had to come over here and be like, what's going on over there? I think it's something from a coffee cup on yeah, my lip. Just a little. I, but I couldn't tell from the screen. <laughs> just, <laughs> so I was like, what's going on with my up, wife? <laughs> I don't get it. And I'm going to get a little bit of my white into my brush. We're going to pull this in. Everything is sort of still wet. So that'll be nice. Creating this sort of soft impact. And little bits of this here and there. Nope. Just catching those first highlights, but I feel like that's too much. I'm going to kind of blend that back. Anyway, Stephen King villains sound ridiculous when you say them out loud, but like when you read them in the book or you actually see them like in a good movie, you're like, ah, it's terrible. Mm, <laughs> I'm still kind of lukewarm on this. Yeah, John is still not in agreement, but I'm going to win him over. <laughs> I'm going to get some of my black. I'm going to come here and like right under here, add some black. I'll bring this around. And it's just sort of a dry brushing, I'm like teening. I want the blue to kind of still show. Because right, we're still getting that. 
and this right here. So that's kind of coming to life, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the next part of it, I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sienna. There's an inner kind of plate. I don't know. John probably knows the word for it. It's a boiler dome. Okay, the boiler dome. And we got a kind of... So that big thing laying on it that's pointed at you is yeah. a boiler. There's oh, is it? Yeah, there's it's filled with water, and the hot uh the hot air from the um furnace is goes through these heat pipes through that boiler up to a smokestack that's generally at the front of the engine, mm -hmm. and uh it you know, a little bit a bit of steam helps. I'm using a that bird bit. sienna if anybody needs to know. <laughs> the jacket keep explaining boilers. I just I know. just wanted to let everyone know I was using bird sienna. But the reason why it's domed is you basically have a giant water tank laying on its belly. And you're looking at the front end of it. I hear ya. Oh, thank you, Mo. Mo just gave us some support, too. Some... Sippy, sippy time for me! <laughs> New roll! <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Then I'm not really going to enforce because, like, on days where it's quiet, I'm still going to drink coffee. That's true. I'm, I'm... Hey, look, I have coffee break. Mmm. Coffee. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, Mo. That was some lovely support from Mo. A coffee break. A coffee break for me. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we've been here a minute now. Well, we knew it was a you know it's we, a three hooter. This was this was not going to be a short class. No, but sometimes we need these more finished classes because people are getting amped up to do gifts for the <laughs> holidays, and this is helpful. I'm taking a little blue and white and blending in there. And now I'm going to get a little bit brighter value of that. Come like right here. And you kind of highlight. You see, see how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Loosely highlighting. So that is also very nice. And we need one more highlight level above that. Yep. So a little more white. I'm just tapping that in. Looks really good, though, doesn't it? It's a pretty magical train. It's getting to be. I'm going to get a little more of my blue. Now, a couple places around here I'm going to. I mean, I it's know. no snow piercer, but. Well, I was going to call it the other train thing, but given <laughs> Kappa, I'm not now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're definitely. I don't want to be seen. No, no, we're definitely in that uh, Snowpiercer camp. Given this, yeah, <laughs> given Kappa, it was a train going somewhere magical for your imagination in a fairy tale. But now it's the Snowpiercer, thanks to Kappa. No, 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 just in, just in all fairness, I think that there is an <laughs> argument to say that Snowpiercer, Snowpiercer is <laughs> the emotional continuation of. Uh, uh, Willy Wonka. So, yeah, I know you're still on that. And Patty gives us some more Sherpa dance love because that's Patty. Patty. Patty's. Patty, how are you? We're going to do some Patty dance. We're going to do some Patty dance. How are you, Patty? Uh, Look, I mean, uh, where's, where's, uh, we even have a little bit of music, high real music. My hair is going to like, what's the effects of glycerin on your hair? Let's find out. <laughs> Texas snowflakes are falling. Yeah. And we have, uh-oh, close my I can't thing. turn them off. I can't, I know. They they said, no, Sherpa. Once you start the party, you're you not keep stopping. Partying. <laughs> you got the rest of this, right? You got the gist. <laughs> this <laughs> just, tutorial's over. Kappa. We're all done. You guys can be <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to blame the government. Okay, well, I, yes. I'm going to, I am a little bubbled. <laughs> So I'm going to do this. Look away. Look away. It's okay. They don't mind. Fresh paint. I have to fresh paint. But I'm going to put out what I need. Um, right now, we're going to just put out what we need for... Um, actually, it's pretty much the same colors. Mm -hmm. There's like one less color and one color out of it. We're going to get the color for the, tr the, the wreath. A little burnt sienna. Man, I need to clean this cap. That cap. Not as much as, guys, I need to clean my hands. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. You got some soap, though. 
everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> not, well, I wasn't thinking that soap, but yeah, you got that soap everywhere too. I was thinking we've been we've been making a lot of Sherpa soap lately. We have been making a lot of Sherpa soap lately. There's How it couple, smells really good. There's a couple bars lying around. A few, some candles, some things. You know, there, you end up with a lot of rough cuts when you're making soap. You know what? But that's all just that's laundry detergent then. So that's fine. I'm putting I mean, out my colors. I'll tell you what they are as soon as I get them back out. Will you? Yeah, you I mean, I was going to have everybody guess, but then I thought that's not helpful <laughs> <laughs> to teaching art in any way. It's a new... A new style? A new style. Where we teaching don't, art? Not going to actually te- tell you anything or show you anything. We're just going to... It's going to be a really pretty train. I'm, like, really liking this. Spider's going to be really into this. I like the train. And it's nice because it's painterly, but then also you can really tell what it is. And that's my favorite space to be in. All right. What I'm doing is I'm getting the glycerin. Oh, I like it. I do too. When, yeah. the, when, the, when I put the glow on and the steam on, oh, it's going to be so nice. The only thing that's gone wrong is I did read Dr. Sleep like right before um, I had, I had uh, picked this image and then read Dr. Sleep and now I feel bad every time I have to say steam. But, you I know. Don't. Don't know what you're talking about. Luckily, it's okay. I'm going to use, this is tinting white, which is essentially the same as mixing white or zinc white. You just want a transparent white. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, use either like a gel medium, like a multi-purpose acrylic polymer, which is like a gel medium, whatever they call gel medium. Or you can use the acrylic glazing liquid that I recommend to thin your titanium white. It's a little bit harder and you'll have to work at it a bit, but it's doable. Doable, yo. So the first thing is I've got to put some bits of smoke back here. Scruffly brushes are going to be my friend. I think I'm going to get a number four Cambridge. And the reason I'm picking this is a mix of bristles and synthetic filament. And I think it's going to do a really nice job. Get a little yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre into my brush, kind of worked in. And let's get a bit of this. The reason there's a bit of a cast to this up here. Oh, I forgot to. You forgot to go over the colors? Mars black, burnt sienna, cad red medium, thalo blue, cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, thalo blue, wait, thalo green, thalo blue, titanium white, tinting white, but you could use zinc white, mixing white, or tinting white, any of those. You had Dr. Sleep on the brain. I had Dr. Sleep on the brain. But this is happy mist. This is happy steam. So I'm going to pull up some nice happy steam. (laughs) I like to mix up the. Tinting steam, steam with the titanium white because it's going to let us really create some la- layers that are both transparent. I'm going to come here and add that as you would. So there's these bits of steam that kind of pull up in a very noticeable way, and then there's this sort of almost off gassing of it right like that you can kind of see there in the trees mm. you can off gas some in the trees put this stage back here because it, it just went through there so what did it do it left behind some steam kind of coming around here but not onto the forefront tree we just banked that back a bit didn't we yeah Now I take my tinting white and honestly my titanium white and I'm going to highlight some of what I did. Not everything. Just enough to show what's going on there. Nice. Now, I think I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my white, tinting white. I'm going to come around here a bit.
maybe a little more yellow into it. See what we got? So a yep. little bit of that coming up. This is magical. Just in that scraping soft. So there's very little paint on this. Look how dry those bristles are. Mm. This is dry brushing, yo. That's what we're doing. A little bit of that there, and then the pressure's super light. You come around. Because, you know, even though you don't have a glow, sometimes in art you want to add things that you don't have. That's why art is sometimes better than photography for our creative space because we can just add the things that we wish we wanted happening. I'm just going to bring some radial lines out. That'll help it feel like twinkling light. See that from a distance? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to see those close up. No. Whoever said catch a train has never stood in front of one. <laughs> no, don't catch it. <laughs> Wait for it on the platform. <laughs> I'm just Politely. bringing these out, and they're kind of just talking about that glow from the headlights. This is going to be really wonderful when we add the snow. Mm. But first, guess what we get to add? Mm, steam? No, oh, little pine needle things. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to take a... I didn't know that. A little bit. <laughs> I don't know why I was like, no, you're so wrong, you're so wrong. <laughs> All right, we got to make a little wreath. And our wreath is kind of up higher. It goes like that. And I'm going to make little bits of pine branches. Mm -hmm. This is little touches of, of things. And I may have to turn my surface so I can have them on the inside and the outside. And I'm just really touching the brush. Right? Exaggerate what you have. That's so okay. We need to kind of do this twice because we've got to do this once with our with a deep shadow of what we're trying to do. A little black in there, right? We're trying to do a deep shadow of it. And then we're gonna come through with some bright highlights to make it pop. As you're going, definitely do that. And then we have to add a bow and then, then snow, then steam. This is a painting painting today. Dip in the water. It's actually been going pretty quick for as much as we've been doing. I thought this was going to be a, like a three-hour tour. I figured three. No, it's hour 48. Wow. That's, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't even know. Yeah, you're probably not going to get in under two, but not much over. That's fantastic. That's doable, guys. Yeah. So I'm just making those little little kind of dabs and, and stuff, and that's going to be like what our wreath is built on, right? Mm-hmm. Little branches just branching out. Whoops. A little bit of the next color I was going to be doing. Actually, I don't even mind. I like that even better, guys. I'm just going to go pure phthalo green. Because when I do the highlights, it'll, they'll be so nice off that. Mm -hmm. So, start over. <laughs> It's best to just take the time you need to get a technique where you want it. You're going along and you're saying, oh, you know, the brown is okay, but what I really like is the phthalo green. Just switch to the phthalo green. When you watch a lot of time-lapse art, watch for the fact of how often 
an artist will paint everything in and then paint it out and repaint it. I think that's the most important lesson from time lapse art. Mm. It's how often artists just completely change their minds in the middle of a project and rethink something. They'll paint a whole bunch of something in. And those are the ones that typically end up on time lap time lapse. Well, you'll like, see it a lot with time lapse. Oh man, I can't teach that because I like messed up halfway through and we had to repaint it. So you're just well, like, they don't eh. teach they don't teach such a time lapse. Time lapse it. Yeah, they call it tutorial, but it's not tutorial. But you, but you know what it's I mean. It's a demo. That's what happens to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, yes. nope. I want a different color thing, and then repaint half of it. But you have to sometimes. You do. We all do. I have to watch you do it. All right, that's pretty cool. I like it. Now, to get kind of the highlight, I'm going to take a little yellow to my green. Maybe even a little white. There we go. Little touches. These are the little details that you will see in your wreath. They're going to make your wreath like, what? That's awesome. So I'll find a little branch and I'll just like pick some of the little needles to paint. See how we're doing? Mm hmm Not all of them, just some. Whatever you got to do to get a good angle on it, do. These are just little... Little tiny defined branches. And which brush are you using there? The I'm four? using the number four round. I haven't even switched out to a detail brush. A little more yellow sometimes. I'll come back through and kind of capture some uh, different little values. See that? And you just travel around the canvas. Capturing a branch or two. You don't have to get every one, just some. Just get the feeling of them? Well, I mean, if you look at it, it's quite a strong feeling, isn't it? It is. You actually get quite a bit of detail in there. Yeah, we do. But we're not working hard for it. And I think that's the important thing. When you see that, that's real gorgeous. But you didn't just murder yourself for those it. Those right? layers really make it happen. Yes, they do. Those because you can you can really see it here on the camera angle. The the darker layers create the depth that you need. Otherwise, you can't see these little bits for what they are. And you want to see these little bits for what they are. And what are those little bits, Sherpa? Little pine branches. They're hope on they the front hope. of the train. They are hope on the front of the train. I really want to do the polar express. I don't want to say that word because a copa. <laughs> Never mind, because you know it's going to be tracking our mm. closed captions too. Snow piercer, snow piercer, snow piercer, snow piercer, snow piercer. <laughs> snow piercer. <laughs> Rated R, snow piercer for adults. <laughs> now, everyone who hasn't seen that movie, they're going to come back and oh, leave dude, comments. It's a horrible movie. Don't watch it. It's it's good, but it's really violent it's, and not happy. It's not. It's a it's a thriller. Science. If you fiction, like horror, and, you'll like yeah. it. If you like The Walking Dead and stuff like that, you'll think it's great. But oh, if you don't you like those things, Steam you and all of the other. Okay, but I don't. I don't know how to explain it. But this is real horror. It, this gore. It's not gore. I mean, like it's an awesome train story that tells you how the end of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory really ends. It's not what it was, and you tricked me into watching it when you said that. But it's it dude. was a trick. I'm adding a little bit of yellow and white. Uh, to the thing so every once in a while I can capture a little bit of highlight as I'm going. Right. You guys can see. 
And I'm those, not acknowledging John Snowpiercer theories in any way. For those of you who agree with me, you can leave a comment in the description down below yeah, <sighs> after the show. So the, but if you have a sensitive sensibility, don't, don't watch it. No, if, you, if you've not seen it, don't. But if, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you how do you how do you put that cat back in the bag? I'm really liking this wreath. Can I tell you all that? I just mm -hmm. dig my wreath. I like the wreath too. <laughs> I'm just like so happy I put that on there, and I like the glow, and I cannot wait to finish the snow. This is maybe my favorite painting of the year so far. This, I love it. I really do. So when I need to go darker, I can just get back into the green, right? And then I have those kind of like first things, and then I can come back with a little bit of the other highlight. I enjoy this. This is very peaceful. Other than the snowpiercer, snowpiercer, snowpiercer. <laughs> we get demonetized. That's fine. <laughs> just, just don't fight us $42,000. Jeez. What? Just, I'm just surprised that the platform wasn't closed the next day. <laughs> and you might get a $42,000 fine if you make a mistake. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Just no like, pressure at all today at work. None. <laughs> John's like, did you, uh, we like actually had two like panic attack marital moments over it. I'll tell you what, we first heard about it. I'm like, don't, don't try Which to scare the, me. Don't make stuff the up. The first one was don't overreact. You're overreacting. You the can't be true. One. It couldn't possibly be that bad. And the second one was, oh my God, we're not prepared. It's going to destroy us all. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. We're going to hang in. We'll be fine. Well, we're, we're just tenacious is our problem. Like the barnacles, we hang out in groups. Yeah. We are nothing else. Tenacious. Do you love how this is just I, lifting I'm, up? I'm enjoying it. It's giving me something to look at. I'm rinse out. Every once in a while, if I'm doing a long paint, I will rinse out. And the reason for that is, is that the paint will be drying on my brush sometimes. And so I need to... Um, just re redo it. <laughs> this is rather nice. You guys like seeing how this wreath is done? Yes. That if we're, they're, they're saying how amazing it looks. They really think that this is turning out beautiful. To quote Jennifer, this is turning out unbelievably awesome. I'm so glad, Jennifer. I had a feeling that this was one of those ones where you were like going to really, really be invested in the outcome. Does it? And want it to be good. Not that anyone's like, gosh, I hope this tutorial that I'm investing an hour of my life in completely sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just... Well, if you show up live, you're going on the fact that you've done a few hundred of these, so it's probably going to turn out okay. Now, and for everybody supporting the retreat channel, thank you so much. Yes, we uh, we noticed that a lot of my designs were finding their way onto other platforms, um, and, and weird short form content. Yeah, and getting like gazillion de millions of views. So we were like. We should. I, I was gonna lose my mind that people were stealing my art, but John said, "You know, it'd be a better, more positive, productive uses that, that will energy? just if if it's good, if if someone taking your artwork can go out and get a bazillion views, so can you, so work at it. <laughs> bazillion D being a really, you know, big number. <laughs> if they want a box, let's box. Well, that that's what he said. So right now we're still getting our." So she's handed to, to ourselves. <laughs> well, we didn't know that there was something happening. <laughs> but we're going to get there. And the good news is, is that, you know, it just makes a lot of new stuff. And again, anything that you guys are in love with can become one All of right. these. Because I do some very strange stuff over there. So if you could, in a succinct couple point. If I could say something succinctly, I'm, I'm, this is the cha most I'm challenging trying not thing to laugh out loud, but sure, <laughs> let's go for it. Could I say something succinctly? Could, could you Number give me, one criticism on my channel, lady talks too much. <laughs> could, could you give me a succinct step-by-step -step bullet point of the 
See, of, of what makes you able to do this wreath and get this to look like this? There's a little, just a little, like, it's looking like layers and... Yes, so it's three values. Yeah. Right? I have the deep value that kind of built the structure, and then uh -huh. I'm coming back through, and I have sort of a base mix here, which is a little bit of my phthalo green and a bit of my yellow. Right? And then a smidge of white. So that's like... Oh, this is the first value, and it's going to show up if you watch, like, so I've got it loaded on the tip, and it's about these little kind of precious little brush marks that, you know, say, oh, I'm a wreath. I'm so wreathy. What was that? That was the printer waking up for some reason. Oh, okay. It just, <laughs> just said, good it was morning. The power going out. It's the Internet of Things. So, you know, I come through, and I'm making these little dot, dot, dots. And then as I'm going every once in a while, I'm going to come over here into the yellow and get some white. And this makes a highlight that's quite noticeable. And then I come back through and hit some highlights. See those? And that's when it really... So it's really at least three values. You could do more. And I, and I work it a little bit at a section. And I'm just patient with it. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, it's going to be gorgeous. Like, honestly, I, you're going to like the painting more than the, well, I'm going to like the painting. Very often we all like the painting more than we like the reference even. Me, I do. I don't take that to heart or anything. Y'all upsetting me when you like my painting more than the reference. <laughs> even though I digitally make the reference. So back in here, see, I just get back to the dark color. <sighs> and remember, Monday nights on Facebook and Friday mornings at 8.30 in the morning, Central Standard Time. But don't worry about anything that you miss because it will end up being here on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Mm. Got to blend these two in together. So this would just be a little precious here because that's where the seams are. It's pretty easy to do this like in some of the other areas, but as you sometimes go forward, it can get a like at this last little bit. A little bit more challenging. Seam it up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's the seam that I got to worry about is right here. And if I got it all together, I should have something that looks a bit like a wreath. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue to my cad red. Make a kind of dark color red. Yeah. I have a brick. And that's the shadow value. The shadow value. The shadow value. I'm going to paint in a little bow. I think I'm not necessarily, I don't know, I might do a double bow. It just depends. Mm. If I feel like it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, might as well. <sighs> Paint that all in with your dark it's, version of red. It's really coming in. Yeah, it does. I'm going to go through and also add a ribbon. So 
So if you'll notice, this is kind of an S curve that sort of happens. So I'm gonna go, and then you know, I know I know I need one here, so I'm gonna find a little spot that looks pretty good, where I feel like I can tuck a ribbon believably. Ah. There we go. So we have some ribbon that's sort of wrapped around our wreath. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty good. It's getting there. It's not done though. I'm gonna get some blue and some more red. Make my shadow color. A shadow. And maybe put on my glasses so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Adding the shadows to separate out the petals of the bow. Mm. And we're going to come here. And you're going to just do a couple coming up. Just two. Under here and just start to do that. And then definitely to think about a shadow there rinse out back into your first red and this is where you touch up anything then i would get that kind of blended yeah come back in you're gonna like the ribbon a lot guys i trim that shadow in Making sure everything is nice and tidy and that we have the shadows that we need. Because when we put in our highlights, that's when we get our bow. So start with just your straight red. Come over the center. Mm. A little bit on this edge and then a little bit at the edge here. Making sure. If you need to go back, you can real easy. See how we do? As you need to. Mm. A little bit on that outer edge. And then kind of right up here, right towards that metal. All right, looking pretty good. I haven't seen a bright bow. I'm gonna take a little bit of that red too. And here at the middle of the ribbon, add a little highlight. Not the whole ribbon, just the middle. So boom, now you have some reflection there. Last thing that you can do, and this is one of those places that tinting white rocks because when you mix with titanium white, it wants to make pink pink instead of what will be the beginning of a pretty decent highlight. See how we do? Mm hmm. A highlight there. You can get a little bit of one here. And then for sure on that. Top point of your ribbon. Just the top point. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of white. 
across there. A little bit there. Just a little pop of highlight. Oh, too much pop of highlight. <laughs> that one was highlighted too much. <laughs> you just take it back. Whenever that happens to you, if it ever gets away from you, just take it back. That's a bow, yo. Mm -hmm. Turned out really good. Snow. Scruffy brush time. Scruffy brush. Scruffy brush, 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 brush. Scruffy brush, brush time. Scruffy brush, 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 brush. Scruffy brush, brush time. Before I get to my scruffy brush, I'm going to do a nice thing for myself. I'm going to take a little bit of my white, a little bit of my blue. Come to the top of my track. Make a little bit of a highlight. Come underneath my track. Reinforce the dark value. Right? Definitely, definitely. Now, scruffity brush mm. for snow. Right? We've got some snow under here. So the first thing we've got is some blue and white. I'll scruff it back and forth. I'll come on next to this and just pull that in. And then definitely a little bit here. Scruffy, scruffy. Scruff. Not bad. Just a little bit of a hint of something. But I'm going to come along. Maybe I will flip this over. <laughs> Make life easy for myself. A little bit of a highlight there. Not quite as much of a highlight over here. But still, something is going on. Get a little more white. Now we need a little more black along that one track. And it can be nice to give yourself a couple little stones or things that are, you know, out, out there doing little things. Because, you know, it's snowing. Let's give ourselves this fabulous, wonderful, amazing mist. I'm gonna pull out some of my zinc, and that's definitely gonna be based in our blue, right? Mm-hmm. And how we build that up. 
I might even grab some of this because I really like that color from the Cad Red. Look at that. Kind of a very specific, wonderful winter cool color. So. My curve. My brush strokes. Begin to fill some of this space up. It's nice to have this be somewhat transparent at this stage. It lets us build it up in layers. Pay attention to this, the, like there's this sort of shape, right? You wanna capture it first, those little shapes. And you wanna capture it first, those little values. So like this is a dark value. Put that right there. Might even get even more of that dark value together. sometimes we see our smoke and our mist as much from the depth of its shadow as mm -hmm. it. So just going to begin to build this up like where that little cloud was ending. I definitely want to have some. Now you could do this misting technique with a lot of different brushes. Yeah, and yeah, any little brush that you're very comfortable kind of scumbling around is a good brush for this, right? So it, dry brushing is great with a stiff brush. Um, you don't want it to hold too much water because you're dealing with acrylic. And that can be problematic. Just adding some depth where I think I would have it. Stumbling that in. See how we're just going? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's build up them layers of lightness. This is, I mean, this is, we're really close to the end here, aren't we? Very close. Just this little steaminess. Just this little steaminess. And of course, the signature. Oh, that thing, yeah. But this has been fantastic, having a really lovely time with our friends here today, hanging out. I've enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for, for showing up to our shows and being a part of our lives. Yeah, that's starting to build up beautifully. Layers. Paintings and ogres are made in layers. Mm-hmm. What's also wonderful is you can come out and add these little bits of mist, you know? Kind of steam out. Kind of putting some of it in the fog. And I haven't even gotten to the snow splatter yet. Mm. Which I didn't have a brush for, so you'll have to just imagine <laughs> until I do it. We'll get it in there. I, well, I just didn't have a digital brush for it. I got to figure out what digital brush I want to use for things like a snow effect. You can see how this just creates that transparent effect that one's trying to get sometimes with something like steam or fog or. And that's because you're using a transparent white. That's because I'm using a transparent white. If I wasn't using a transparent white, I'd have to put something out like GAC and try to thin. I'll show you my titanium white a bit. Mm. But at that point, guys, if I was going to go between investing in GAC and getting some tinting white, I'd probably get some tinting white. 
And you can see it's a little different. It's still even with that a little bit more. Oh, that's quite nice though, actually. So I'm really happy. It's good for the next layer. It's very it's just making me happy, so yay that. <laughs> Sometimes you just, uh, you're like, oh, that's what, well, that's wonderful. So now I'm just using a medium and a titanium white. And you, I think it's pretty evident that there are some differences between the two products. Mm-hmm. I'm just making sure that even though this is a shadow that we're we're building up a the different values that we would have in our steam. You guys like it so far? I'm loving it. I'm all quietly watching the last little bits come in. So I'm just using titanium uh, white and some of the Palmer medium and a little of our color here. Mm. I'm mixing some different values and finding little spots that I... I just curl. I like to kind of put some gesture in there. I do. I, you know, man, I just do. That's just turned out really amazing. The last couple of bow strokes just. Yeah. I love when I'm not disappointing my community <laughs> with the painting. <laughs> I always worry about that, you know, like, because there's a painting we all have in our heart, right? Mm-hmm. That we're trying to do. So you can see I just curl this up. And this lets me find some spots. Yeah, this is going to be the next, the beautiful little reveal of this smoke coming out. Yeah, where it, like, all comes together. Mm-hmm. Let's brush that up. Wow. That's just coming right together. A little more white into the brush. Finding those little bits to just puff out, pull places. Now I'm going to take my number uh, four round 
going to come here and get just a little bit of black. I'm going to foreground sticks. Yeah, there were some weren't there in there. See if we like those. A little foreground grass can be helpful in creating that sense of what's there. I like it. So take that in right now. And what I will do is I'll take a picture of it before snow and I'll take a picture of it after snow. Mm, Pre-snow. Pre-snow you probably want a record of and what happens <laughs> after I splatter the whole thing up. Because this is a very scary stage of the painting. So if you'll, yeah, you can, I don't want to get the picture of the back of your head, but I could, I could probably. You get a photo and then. You can get one too. You just step aside. I'll look at it. There we go. Whoosh. See, I can see it there. Where am I? Where do Whoosh. I need to go to not be in that shot? <laughs> it's the Omni camera. It's okay. Come on forward. I got you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's looking really good. Very magical. Very sweet. Very wonderful, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Splattering brush from the Art Sherpa Galaxy set. Fluid white from Golden Paint. Right, this is titanium white and fluid, but if you don't have that, some Americana deco paint will do too. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here and I'm going to splatter, guys. It's gonna snow. There it is, snow. That turned out amazing isn't it yes okay i'm gonna add a little snow more snow here at the mist but less on the train that turned out great i feel like it needs a signature oh yeah signatures are good <laughs> signature you must is good sign it sherpa hmm I really like this piece, so I'm going to sign real small and under the train. <laughs> I tend to do signatures that are there and legible, but don't distract from the um, art. Mm. But do make framers miserable. Because I sign close to the edge, and that makes framers <laughs> super unhappy. That's okay. We just make them shadow. Uh, they have they have a whole bunch of ways that they solve that problem. So they do it. They got it worked out. Good problem for them to have. Look at that. We did it, guys. That turned out amazing. We did exactly. Oh, I think we can bubble our way on out, can't you can we? Can bubble your way I on out. I think we should bubble our way out. Yeah. This this is holiday joy, is it not? Let's turn our bubbles on and turn our heart lights on and remember that we can be the best version of ourselves. We can be the kindest version of ourselves. And to that end, be good to yourself, be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.